<laughs> I've been there, I've been there, brother. I know that as a <laughs> as a as a six three guy, I know that struggle. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the reaction portion of Studio V21. I am Juan Cook Ryan. This is Nino right here. Ooh. And welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope that you are joining us fresh from part one of our little mini series we decided to try out. And if you didn't see it, the link is right here. Yep. The link is going to be right here. Basically, we're trying to see what we love from an everyman perspective. And basically, what else could be an everyman perspective? Maybe like, comment, subscribe down below mm -hmm. to Studio B21, depending on when this video is uploaded. Maybe we're at 10,000 subscribers already. Maybe. Maybe. You know, or you could help us get there. I think it would be a very good thing for you to help us get there. Because once we get there, more fun unlocks for everyone. Yee <laughs> But yeah. So in case, you missed the, in case you missed it last time, a nice little recap. Uh, we're doing a video on Keith Habersberger from the Try Guys. Eating at a three Michelin star restaurant. Eat everything, everything on the menu. Everything on the menu. On the menu. Which is astounding. Well, with a fresh perspective, which is not usual. Yeah. So, last time we did all the little salads, little bar bites. Now, we're going to start off making risotto. 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 So, let's get into it, guys. Chef Tusk in the kitchen to make and try the risotto. Cool. Thanks. So, we're going to start with the risotto. Uh, I'm going to make uh, a risotto with sirotin, passion fruit. Got a tiny bit of asquat and uh, sea beans. We use the fresh uh, passion fruit. Passion fruit is funny because, you know, it looks like fish eggs. You know? To each his own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a bunch of the rice. This is a very important stage. We're basically covering the rice with the fat, which is, uh, in this case, the uh, butter and a little bit of that uh, passion fruit oil. And I'm just going to toast and you'll start to... I wonder what their cooking wine is. <laughs> it's a bar, the cheap bar wine. <laughs> yeah, but what's the cheap bar wine at a three Michelin star restaurant? <laughs> Give me the wine that's going off. Which one is that? The, the, the 1976 Chateau Mont Rocher. Good lord. Good lord. The smell it gets a little bit nutty, so you get a beautiful, creamy, uh, you know, texture of the rice. I feel like yeah. I'm learning more than I've ever learned on Excellent. this show. Well. I feel like I could make risotto. You like to stir a little bit? I would love to. Here. This whole thing is so much hotter than I think uh, anyone at home could ever know. Please record check. We turned the hood off, and I didn't really realize it was that much heat coming off yep. of this yeah. Yeah. whole wall. You can even see if you move it over, you'll start to see I saw that when it's right here, I guess there's so much hours. more heat right there. I'm going to taste it one more time. So it's tender, but it still has a nice kind of bite mm -hmm. to it. If you were in Italy, they'd probably even Cook it a little bit less. We've got my sea beans. What are sea beans? You taste one. Beans of the sea? Yeah, you'll find them like growing here in California. A little mm. sea vegetable. It's so, so, like, yeah. salty. You know, right when that, the right. I love sea beans. I love the taste. I love the texture of them. The crunch. It's so salty, so good. It's like its own little bar snack itself. What is sea bean? It's essentially like little little bits of seaweed, actually. Like the, almost like, I want to say it's almost like the stem of a seaweed, to be honest with you. But so it's kelp-like. It's kelp. It's kelp-like, but it's really salty, really good. And it just, it's so nice on the tongue. Really, you just have to have all your other components because you don't really want it to sit much. One of the biggest Serving problems coffee in the is you spend 20 minutes making something and then occasionally the guests will get up from the table. You either have to start over again or there's a minute or two of time where you uh, have to sell the rice. So all the patrons just sort of ask their servers, like, is it okay for me to get up now? And they'll be like, no. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah. <laughs> Delicate balance. And you just call it the risotto. You give it that simple of a name. Yep. The risotto. Yeah, that's some kind of open to it. Yeah, it really is nice. You need a tiny bit of flashing. Anuni can do like 
you know, overwhelming, but with all the other little elements, it, it's very balanced while still being a very like strong flavor. Obviously, if you're taking a whole bite of it, it's creamy. You got a uh, salinity, mm. you got some acid, a little bit of heat, so it's you know everything kind of coming together. But the perk is definitely the the star at the yeah. end of the day, along with the, the rice. The passion fruit is kind of like the best part of it because everything is so rich, and then you get these little tart, crunchy moments that break up all that richness. It's really good. I feel bad for smirching the passion fruit at the top of this, saying it wasn't beautiful because I just I think I didn't see the beauty. Well, you know, I, I mean, do. Now I do. It's my job. Yeah, you did. I show you that. You really did. Having a little Cinderella moment. She was always beautiful. She just didn't have a dress. All right. Well, let's hop into what's next. Share the rest of it with yeah. your team. Get in there. Yeah. I should try some. Continuing on, we're going to have a few more things. And joining me for the first time at the Eat the Menu table stage, none other than YouTube engineer and scientist Mark Rober. Ooh, the cool. The biggest guest we've ever had on this show. He tried quite a few times, but um, it's got to be three star or higher for yeah. me. So you literally did say, call me back when you're doing a nice place. Yeah. I don't normally have this good of posture, but I feel like. You look nice. I need to have yeah. posture here. Three stars. Okay. And what have we here? Those are the seasoned spring peas. Uh, it's going to be done. In a little jelly with clam and one jelly. One jelly is basically bacon made with the uh, pork cheek. Yeah, I was gonna say the cheek part. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. You this could be good. Is that fresh? That is that dark. This looks like part. Do they get a seagull? They already saw. Oh, I see. The spring. Yeah. I'm gonna go start with flour. Mm. What do you think? I'm not registering the guanciale. I also don't know what that is. <laughs> yes, clams. Try <laughs> said something. Texture. That would be the guanciale. Kind of is like a split pea soup, but it's, yeah, it's totally exactly a split pea soup. Right, like every single pea has its own bite. You're so good at this. Thank you. Like, okay. As you're saying, I'm like, that's that's right. That's exactly what it is I'm like. Trying so hard. Just how I talk about. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Uh, it's a really like just warm. You know, it's not hot. It's very pleasantly warm, kind of like the end of the bath when you're in a bath. The end of the bath. It's not bad, you know? It's like a bath sport. It's like an exercise sport. Your body gets so tired. It's so sore. I barely fit in the bathtub. You can imagine. <laughs> I've been there, I've been there, brother. I know that as a as a as a six three guy, I know that struggle. Yeah, could be done with the bacon as well, but actually, it's really nice. And the bacon clam combo, classic combo. Classic combo, bacon clam. Yeah, Ponchale we've been calling bacon. Yeah, that's our Taco Bell palate. Yeah, crashing into the video. Oh, embarrassing. I do like how everything is looks very beautiful, and this is their spring menu, and everything does evoke spring. Mm. It's very springy, the flowers, the greenery, even just the simplicity of peas. But I've never had split peas not soup. Yeah. Yeah. These are split. Does that just happen naturally, or someone has to split them? To crack them? Like, twist them? They must split easily, right? Yeah, they must. <laughs> Take a little piece of, like, floss wire <laughs> right through the center. Some chef uh -huh. just cutting each pea. <gasps> What are these little guys? I feel like here you eat with your eyes and then you eat with your mouth. Especially them. They, they only eat with uh, What do we got here? We got the wild nettle lizard, pine gold tree. It uh, runs along our farm. Uh, so in the springtime, we get uh, close to 40 pounds of nettles wow. per week. And we have a little pulpitine or wild nettle. It's probably wild nettle chips. We have uh, a little bit of dough away to reduce put some olive oil from California. I like the two steps. Okay, a couple things here. Uh, a velouté is a sauce or soup made with broth that's been thickened with traditionally a roux or flour and butter. Second thing, those are the same metal chips as the first video. Yeah. Right? That they're dual purposing, so they are pre made. Yep. You know, so the the flower ones go into the bar menu. The curly ones go into the food. Yep, so we got to see it like this first. Because right. you kind of lose the nettles. You lose it. Let's get into this. The velouté. Velouté. Wow. Velouté. That's good. That's good. You're not getting good. this on the top of well. No, you're really not. It's you know, so funny. The little bundles, they're very soft and kind of like a pureed green, but they're really nicely 
together, but when I first saw them, they looked kind of like crunch berries. Yep. <laughs> like in Captain Crunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I kind of like was like, is this going to be crunchy? What is this going to be? Um, the flavor is so good. So smooth and creamy. That's really delicious. This, also, is, this is another lick bowl clean mm -hmm. kind of dish. I really wish I had it. Crusty bread, just oh, scrape yeah. the whole thing. This isn't a lick the bowl place. It's hard to lick bowls. Mm -hmm. Bowls you'd sort of tip up and drink, like the scoop thing, like with ice cream. Mm -hmm. And then you scoop it down and then you do that at the bottom. Yeah, you shovel it. Yeah. I love the different <laughs> textures. You have the, the little fried nettle, mm -hmm. is like a little bit crispy, and then you have sort of the chewy nettle here, then you have the just broth. And they really do a great job of taking one ingredient and giving you a few different ways to experience. I wanted to do that style of playing at the ACC, by the way, but they didn't trust the servers enough. No, and <laughs> for like, good reason. Our our servers blessed them. They were good, but they weren't that good. And like they would, I would lose the presentation the entire time. Yep. For the soup, just waiting there, just dying on the line, and my pre presentation was done by the time I hit the table. I was so sad. That's all. <laughs> that's that's just my rant. Again, very. Spring. Mm -hmm. It evokes spring. It's very green. Very like green. Uh, only green. Only fact. green. I mean, there's a little bit of less green. That's true. And then, but then there's also some darker green. Just shades of green. Yeah. Wow. Kermit's autobiography. Autobiography. He wrote it himself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's true. Well done, Kermit. Yeah. Someone else might have had a hand in it. It's like a ghostwriter. Let's be honest. No, he's yeah. a puppet. I'm sorry. He's a puppet. I'm not fast enough. Yeah, I'm not fast. He's enough. a puppet. He's a puppet after all. Wow. wow. She didn't even guess what that is. Which one? This one's gonna be black cod, uh, cod in West Marin, which is north of here. Come with the garlic scape marjon sauce. So it's first in season garlic scape, and it's all wrapped in some chanterelle mushroom and Swiss chard. I have a rule with fancy restaurants. This is true. If, if black cod is on the menu, I order it. Really? It's, why? It when done right, it's like a mint. Really? So I'm not even kidding. It's like That's butter. Like it's so good. So it's like you've been reading my diary. I, I, I didn't. Okay. I promise. <laughs> I would, I would never, I would never, I could barely read at all. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so sorry at home. Wow. Yeah, taste this. wow. I might have to start abiding by your rule. Mm. Because that is unbelievable. I'm just like. I just want to go on. That look that Mark just gave as soon as he ate, that smile on the first bite is exactly what you look for if you're a chef in the restaurant. That is the reaction that makes it worth the 100 hour work week, oh, yeah. makes it worth the cuts, the burns, to see someone take one bite of your food and go full ratatouille. Yes. It's the, the, the sense is just flashing back. The brain, the brain essentially going, <laughs> holy shit, that's delicious. Like good stuff, good stuff. Like buttery and smooth and like wow, melts. Like I chew that with my tongue. Mm. And the sauce is so rich. It's like this little morsel of fish. It's so small, right? But there's so much flavor. I feel like I want to take my time with it. I know. I'm going with the accoutrement before there, I go back. Yeah. So sometimes there's dishes where after your first bite, you just keep taking smaller bites. Mm. It's, it's going to last forever. Yeah. yeah. Cheesy buddy to crunch. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> No. Like I want to talk about green, baby. We're going to talk about these mushrooms. That's so, that's so good. Wow, great texture. Mm -hmm. it almost tastes like a scallop. Mm. Again, yeah. there he is. You guys are lucky to have him in your guide. <laughs> if I was hosting the show, it'd be like, mm, so good. Yum, good. Yeah, that one's so good. good. Yeah. I wish you were here to taste it. What, is this a little asparagus? What is this? That's the garlic like steak. You know what garlic scape is? Expert. <laughs> so does the garlic come in this? It's the Nothing. bottom of uh, the green onion, right? It's yeah. when garlic grows. It grows. It grows out two ways, right? Either from the bulb itself, or it wants to grow another yeah. garlic. So it shoots out a main. It's the green on the garlic. Then on top of that green starts another bulb of garlic. And that's the garlic scape. No, the, the garlic is like the bulb. You know when you leave the garlic too long in your house, it starts shooting up? Eventually, if it were cared for, <laughs> it'll become a plant and not just something you have to throw in the garbage. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm always so ashamed when it gets to that point because I'm like, I'm such a terrible human being. No. There are so many times where the life finds a way motto is relevant. Like, there's food in your house that's just desperately trying to grow. Potatoes. Like, let me out. Let me out. Put me back in the ground. Mm -hmm. I saved this last night. Mm -hmm. I'm going like, to do the same thing. Put it in the sauce. Yeah. That should be your new... A black hog is always... Uh, fancy restaurant. It's usually not sold except that fancy restaurant. Mm -hmm. The mushroom is also so good. Yeah. It's so expensive. Mm -hmm. Food costs on that would be amazing. Wow. Right. Acidic. Delicious. Yep. That's good. Delicate. Mm. Delicate? Delicate. Delicate and yet a little heavy. Like an expert forklift driver. Yeah, we really have seen a lot of videos online where forklift drivers actually knock down the entire warehouse. Yep. I've seen where there's like a quarter on the ground. They can go and like yeah. flip the quarter. Yeah. Uh, heavy, heavy and delicate. Heavy and delicate. This feels like a plate like this. Yeah, it does feel like a plate. It honestly sounds like a mean thing to call someone. <laughs> 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 Your mother was a plate. <laughs> In the kitchen for the lamb. This is from uh, Don Watson, who I worked with for uh, over 20 some odd years. So we try to use basically everything to yeah. pay homage to it. Animal, and that if we don't use something, it'll go next door to her, to Katonia or other cool. restaurant here in the same building. Okay. We've got our loin. I love that they use the whole animal. Yep. I, like, it's so practical. It's cost wise, it's the best way to do it, but and it even, just and pays you, respect to the animal. But even better, you hear in his thing any part of that they don't use goes to their neighbor restaurant, Katonia. So it's all being used. It's all being used. You know, and that we, that just shows the level of care. Yeah. That that Michelin stars have to do to get that actual to that level. Heard. Uh, correct. So you went from the whole lamb to just the loin, and then I'm just gonna go on either side. You can see this is the tenderloin, which full serve. See the interior of it. Yeah. You just gotta even. Grab it at this wow. point. Your hand. Wow, that's so, it. Wow, it just came right out. Yep, this will be part of uh, the dish. We mainly get the whole animals so that we can educate all the uh, chefs on how to break them down. Nobody wants to unwrap the cut of meat wrapped up in plastic or anything like that. No. So it's better for the farmer. Also, we're trying to be as sustainable as possible. That's why we try to use basically everything between the different restaurants. How often are you breaking down a whole lamb? Actually, quite often. We get uh, 12 lambs like almost a week. There we go. Wow. Incredible. We got a lot of lamb. Yep. There's ribs, this tenderloin, this is the normal loin. That's a loin. Cool. So I'm going to start with the rack and the loin. And uh, we have a fireplace built. This is all new. I'll cook this at a lower temperature because I want to render render that skin. I'm going to go slower with the, the loin. Now, this is actually somewhat new, or maybe it's becoming more popular, and maybe it's been going on for a while, but the open fire in the kitchen concept where you're cooking everything over an open flame and not in and not just in a pan it's like the wood the wood fire the wood fire and letting the smoke permeate naturally into the food that you are cooking yeah yeah which is which most restaurants can't do you need a hell of a hood system for that and it's just it's very impractical if you're pushing out tables to stoke a fire especially at the mission level where everything yeah. has to be consistently perfect yeah it's... and the unpredictability of fire that's the thing you need like like a guy just babysitting that fire. yep you need a full-time staff member on that fire so it's like to actually do it and do it well it's higher level yep and the uh, rack and the idea is i could just kind of pull up any slow things down start them up that was pressed with a little bit of the smoked uh, lamb fat so anyway we're going nice and uh slow and low here just want to render render that wow, really nice and yeah. slow so i'm just going to continue rotating the meat around until i get that skin beautifully uh, rendered so i was wondering why they left so much of a fat cap on it's to render and yeah you need that fat cap if you're going to do open flame Otherwise, you're just gonna scorch the meat. You're gonna scorch the meat. The inside won't get cooked through. This this ensures a lower and a slower cook. Well, when we opened, uh, you know, Michelin wasn't in the United States. I don't think he asked any chef at that time who really wasn't 
like on the radar of them coming and then when it got announced it was like okay i was just so busy got the call i was in my basement there was two michaels on the list so they called myself they gave me two stars it was for the other michael so i got oh. called back a minute later and then lost one immediately we got the star and i was in 07 and then the year that we got the second star but uh, that was really exciting and uh as a chef like once you you get one you're always trying for two and if you're trying for two you might as well try to you know play your way to the top it wasn't just about uh that it was just about making the restaurant better and the guest experience better we got the third one in 2017 and that was pretty pretty exciting and it was just great for the, the team you know it's like a theater performance um curtain comes up every night at five o'clock and you just have to kind of be prepared and do do the best you can and if you have a bad performance you just got to shake it off and get kind of back into a positive kind of zone and uh keep the team inspired finally great color on that man center line. wow thanks it's really delightful for me wow that really tasted like spring a little more greenery mm. that was incredible it's gorgeous and honestly like even just a little bit of that that I tasted in the mat. Such a different uh, flavor just between the two of these. Should I sit at this little table? Michelle, is this for to bring the guests into the kitchen? Wow. Uh, the, those that want to come in for a course. Wow. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Kitchen so table. Many, like, steps. Love I mean, it. I, I haven't seen such a, a really delicate prep where every single thing is so powerfully done. Cheers. Do you think? Thanks. Cheers. Did you taste that skin is? Yeah. The crunch on that is just awesome. <laughs> It's just so awesome. It has like a almost like as crispy as you get like a pork skin, but really a nice flavor. The baba puree has a really great bitterness. They're trying a little bit of everything with it. Mm. Baba is black truffle. I like a lot. So it's the last uh, black truffles mm. of the year, I think, was this week. So the baba beans. You can tell uh, how fresh they are. Yeah, they're so good. They're, wow. You know, the color is a little bit lighter, but they didn't really need oh my gosh, more it's cooking. So delicious. So. The salad is like great texture, but it still has like that onion that just started the dish as a great presence throughout. This tastes like eating the whole farm. It almost tastes like the smell after it rains with all the grass, like giving all that herbal quality and like just the earthy bitterness, but freshness. It's really nice. I'm, I'm so honestly impressed with how delicious this papa bean salad is with the truffle. It's just like truffle can get overwhelming and dominate, but it just all really blends together in this really nice way. That's great. Wow. Is that your butter? It is. Wow. We've got uh, our baker, CK, here to tell you. And I'll let him tell you about the bread and the Maybe the butter too? Yeah, that was about it. Yeah, so we take veg ash, uh, a lot of the stuff that we get from the farm, the trim, and anything that's tasty. We make our ash with it out of the hearth. And then I just basically made a ciabatta, something to go along with for some color. We put a little bit of squid ink in there. It gives it that black look. I'm pretty proud of it. I feel like you take a little of both sides, yeah. Yep. So they basically burn their leftovers. Mm -hmm. Okay. The bread. That right, butter is really good. That's a hell of a crunch yeah. on that bread. It's uh, pretty light, mm -hmm. but texturally it's very uh, crispy, uh, yeah. soft in the interior, and then you know, once you get the butter with it, it's a... Uh, That's right. Crunchy, fluffy. The butter is delicious. Right, so I'm dipping this in the plate. Really compliments all those things super well. Especially with the butter that just makes it like a little fattier and more rich when you're having that like very fresh fava salad. Everything was so good, and the bread are great. Just a compliment to it all. Glad I remembered it. Curious. Glad I remembered it. it. Bread coming out for the main course. Bread feels like something that should have come out Soup. about like three courses ago. Yeah. Maybe um, it was a scheduling thing. Maybe they actually straight up forgot the bread, but. Well, or maybe, it, well, you know what it could have also been? More than likely, this was done early in the morning. Maybe the bread hadn't been made yet. I'll go with that. Yeah. Because it, it's. That seems more likely than them just forgetting to put out the bread. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just like, oh yeah, we made the bread. So yeah, here. Yeah. Before we forget to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems. I don't think they have it off the table. You think they have it at the table like while you wait and you snack on bread? Or would it be paired think, with a course? I think it would be paired with a course, but not a lamb course. Yeah, especially because it's, it's already fatty. Yeah. 
You know, you don't need that butter and bread. Type if anything, deal. I would have put it with the volute course. The yeah. volute, you use the bread to scoop it up. Yeah, and it's so bitter, that nettle. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it needs that, that fat to, yeah. to cut it. But yeah, yeah, I got a good point on that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. good. It's a great point on that bread there. Yeah. It's like, it's, you get caught up in the, the whole editing and the magic of the video that you forget behind the scenes like they're doing this more than likely this was done at like i'm gonna say 9 30 in the morning yeah like way way pre-service there's it's like yeah there's like i don't care how popular you are on youtube you're not renting out an entire three michelin star restaurant for one day yeah you're, you're paying them way handsomely yeah by the way to do this yeah but yeah you're not <laughs> you can't rent out the entire restaurant so i'm ho i'm guessing that the bread had just basically been finished for prep wise and they decided to just include it with the lamb it's like oh since you're here i'm insensitive to die. i mean yeah since you're here like yeah. and since you're here you've made it to the end of the video end of part two i did so now more than likely we're gonna we were debating on whether this would be a three or four part more than likely it's gonna be a three-parter guys so we will see you next time for the desserts and what we think person and what our final thoughts are yeah i like that i think that's a great plan hopefully it goes according to plan but until then take care of you take care of others and we hope to see you again soon have a great rest of your day guys Bye.